Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought we'd go over uh, something called channel control. Let me create an object. Go to create. I'll just make a polygon cube. So, this object has channels. If you look over here on the right side, this is my channel box. And you can see P cube 1. This is the object I have selected. And these are all the displayed channels. Translate XYZ which, move, which uh, controls movement, rotate XYZ, which controls rotation, scale XYZ, which controls scale, and then visibility, whether I can see it or not. So if I were to grab any of these channels and manipulate them, you see it adjusts uh, the, how it is described, rotating on the Z axis, scaling on the Z axis, or visibility on or off. And these are things that can be animated. You can animate the movement, scale, rotation. You can animate when the cube becomes visible and invisible using these channels. Now there are actually several hidden channels on every object in Maya. And it, by default, displays the ones that are most relevant to an object. So I select my cube here and go to Window, General Editors, Channel Control. So this is the channel control window. We have three main columns, keyable, which means that you can animate them and set keys, non-keyable hidden, these are hidden attributes or hidden channels I should say of this cube that are not keyable, you cannot animate them, and they're hidden, which means they're not displayed in the channel box. And then we have non-keyable displayed over here on the right, which is empty. And this is the keyable tab. If you go to the locked tab, we have locked and non-locked. And right now everything is not locked. So everything is displayed on the right and nothing is locked, which is an empty column on the left. So keyable. Simply what that means is if something can be animated or if a key can be set for that channel and it is displayed in the channel box, it is here on the left side and you can see that all the channels that we see here on the right in the channel box are listed in the keyable column in the channel control window non-keyable hidden you'll see a plethora of, key, of other channels that are associated with this cube that are there they all have values but they're just not displayed and they're not able to be keyed because they're in this column and then we have nothing in the non-keyable display, which means the channel would be visible here, but you still cannot set a key for it. So for example, let's say visibility, if we move it over to non-keyable hidden with this little move arrows on the left side of the window, we also have move on the right side. You see the arrows go to the left and these arrows go to the right. By clicking the move right button, I've moved visibility from the keyable column to the right to the non-keyable hidden column. So now my channel box will see visibility is gone. If I click move to the right again, it gets moved to the non-keyable displayed column and now you'll see visibility here is visible in my channel box, but the on here, while I can manipulate this, I can turn it on and off and it will affect the cube. I can't set a key for it. This cannot be animated. So if I choose the visibility uh, channel in my channel control, I, I can, you can see my move right button is grayed out because there's no more columns to the right to move it to. My move left button is available. So I move left back to the non keyable hidden uh, column and move left again and it becomes keyable again and is displayed in the channel box. So that's the basics of how this works. You just choose a channel and move it with these buttons left and right to whichever column you want it displayed in. But let's look at some of these other non-keyable hidden uh, channels. Now we're not going to go through every single one of these right now. There's a lot of stuff to go over. But just for example display handle okay so display handle is a non keyable hidden channel for this cube if I move it to the left 
it becomes keyable and visible. So now, I'm going to minimize this. You see I have this display handle channel for my queue. And right now, by default, it's turned off. If I turn it on, you see I have this little uh, crosshair that becomes visible on my cube that I can use as a selection method. So if, while it's in wireframe, for instance, if I were to... if So when I select the empty space of the cube, it does, the cube does not get selected when I'm in wireframe view. If I click and select the edges of the cube in wireframe, it does get selected. But with this handle here, I can literally select that handle in wireframe and it will select the cube. I don't necessarily have to click on one of these edges. Assuming that that is difficult in your scene, if you have lots of different objects and you're trying to select a certain object, you, this handle might make that easier. That's just one example of one of the hidden channels that an object has. Display handle on. If I go back to my channel control window, I can then choose that display handle uh, channel on the keyable column and move it back to the non keyable hidden column and it does go away from my channel box but you'll see the handle is still there that that display handle uh, channel is still an active channel it does have that value of being on and displaying the handle so keep that in mind just because it's not in here doesn't mean it's inactive you can actually find that channel or all these hidden channels in the attribute editor if I hit control A while I have the cube selected you can select the pcube one tab in the attribute editor in my case which uh, will select the cube node the cube object node I should say and so if I scroll down here I have a display folder if I open that up you'll see I have the display handle checkbox which is on it's been checked and if I turn uncheck it it essentially turn display handle off so this is an active attribute of this cube that I can open the attribute editor and access, turn it on and off, but it might just be easier for you to use the channel control and just simply add it to your object's channel list. And you can obviously go through all of these different channels and just uh, play with what these do and see you might, you might find something that uh, is very useful for you to have on all the time. Okay, let's look at the locked tab and what this simply means is a channel can be locked meaning that it cannot be changed if it is locked and right now nothing is locked if I were to select my cube and over here in my channel box I can choose for example scale Y right click it in the channel box and I have a whole list of actions and one of these at the very bottom here is lock selected if I choose that you see that the scale Y channel it has this gray box and in my channel control uh, window if I go to the locked tab you'll see scale Y is in the locked column so anytime I try to change any of these scale channels you'll see it will not get any taller because scale Y which controls how tall it is is locked So if I choose the scale handle, also you'll see that the normally green scale Y handle has also turned gray, indicating that no matter what I do, it will not change. Clicking and dragging on that handle does nothing. Clicking and dragging on the others do, of course, because they're not locked. So right clicking on a channel will lock it also, and you can select this channel right click and choose hopefully that's not off the screen too much but you can unlock selected that's what that option says like so so now it's no longer locked and it is green like usual and then if I go back to my channel control window the locked column is empty again so you can right click on a channel really quickly and lock it that way or over here in my non-locked list which is everything I have scale Y right here I can move it to the locked column and that will also lock the channel in the same way so it's simply another way of doing the same action of locking a channel you can right click it in the channel box 
but if it is an attribute or if it is a channel that is not displayed in the channel box you can either find it in the attribute editor for example if I wanted to lock display handle here in the attribute editor I can lock attribute by right clicking it and choose the lock attribute uh, option or if I open my channel control I can find display handle here and choose to lock it that way by simply moving it from one column to the other so by lock I chose to lock display handle attribute it's not visible in the channel box it's not keyable but it is non keyable hidden display handle and locked and I can choose to unlock it by using the uh, move right button okay well let's look at some of these other options that we have down here toward the bottom we have change all selected objects of the same type and then over here we have some different uh, win uh, menus the help menu is pretty much the same for everything you go to the my help and it pretty much tell you everything that I tell you of course but you can actually have multiple objects selected at the same time when you're using your channel control so let me unlock this here and then I'll just make a sphere for example select them both go back to my channel control so up here I have the object menu and you can see I can switch between the two so the title of my channel control menu says P sphere 1 so I'm controlling the attributes so I'm controlling the channels of the sphere right now even though I have the cube and the sphere both selected I can switch between them by going to the object menu and choosing P cube 1 so now the window says channel control P cube 1 meaning that now I'm controlling the cubes channels you can switch between the two like this now there's also this uh, checkbox which says change all selected objects of the same type. So I'm having, I have two objects or polygonal objects selected, two uh, geometry objects. I can choose to display handle and with this checked and if I move it to the left keyable column and then click on my cube you'll see display handle and the sphere display handle. They'll both display that channel since I have this checkbox. If I uncheck it, and you see I'm focused on the sphere, channel control sphere, and then hide the display handle channel. If I select the sphere, display handle is gone, but the cube display handle is still there. So that checkbox simply lets you control that aspect for multiple objects at the same time or choose to individually do it if you uncheck it. And this works of course with the locked tab as well. You can lock the same channel on multiple objects or unlock the same channel on multiple objects using this checkbox. Then channel names. Maya by default has three uh, name types. There's nice which I have active at the moment. Nice names which adds, you know, each word is spaced. There's not like underscores or or anything like that you can read it like normal English language so for example display space scale space pivot display scale pivot you know it, it's just a really nice attribute uh, name that I can read easily but they're also if you are super familiar with Maya and don't need to have all the words spelled out for you there's the long name which isn't too different you can still read it it, it does this one word thing and for every capital letter uh, it is where it indicates a new word so display scale pivot is still readable and the S is capitalized and the P is capitalized for scale and pivot kinda indicating the different words in the name then there's also short which if you are super familiar with Maya and know everything about everything <laughs> you can know that all these letters mean something <laughs> So, for example, in the keyable column, DH is for display handle, RX is for, uh, I guess, rotate X, you know, and so on. I don't use that too much. I'm not, I'm not so confident in my ability to distinguish what GPR is to not have it displayed. So I use nice names. Oh, ghosts, pre steps, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, 
So that's channel names. You can just change uh, how the channels are displayed in that way. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, channel control can be extremely useful if you have attributes that you're always adjusting and changing. You can simply add them to your objects channels and have a lot easier uh, way of getting to them. You can also, uh, which we'll talk about in future videos, you know, you can create your own custom channels for objects and you can control them in this way. So anyway, that's been Channel Control. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you uh, will like, subscribe, comment. Definitely let me know if you have any uh, requests. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And thanks again for watching.